Breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. Federal agents raid a Wake County home. We're live on the scene with what we have learned about it. Durham County commissioners are searching for a new leader after the sudden resignation of the county manager. What sources tell WRL was behind the split. Plus. And the Dodgers dominate game three. They're a win away from a world championship. It's do or die time for the New York Yankees. The Dodgers look to clinch the World Series in a four game sweep. It could happen tonight. First of all, breaking news this noon, a quiet Wake County community is buzzing after FBI agents surrounded a home on Hay River Street that is in the Hunter's Mark neighborhood right across from that Amazon Fulfillment Center on Jones Sausage Road, right on the Raleigh Garner line. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. W Orioles Brett Nice is in the neighborhood right now. And Brett, what have you been able to learn about the people who live there? Yeah, Renee, this is really a quiet neighborhood, and it seems like a pretty normal neighborhood, but this is the home behind me that we're talking about, 429 Hay River Street, and you can see uh, the, there uh, is uh, an open garage there and just one car in the driveway at this point. There were multiple cars at uh, an earlier point in the morning. One car just left. We actually uh, spoke with the, the man that drove that car away. He appears to live here at the home. Uh, we want to show you some video earlier from the WRL Breaking News Tracker to show you what this FBI raid looked like. There were agents everywhere taking pictures of a number of things, including the cars here on the property, opening the hoods of the cars, the doors, searching through them, going in and out of this house as well. They also towed a truck, a pickup truck that was here in this driveway. They towed that away from the scene. They left about 30 minutes or so ago here from this scene. And just a few minutes ago, we talked to that man who uh, drove away with two other people in that car. Uh, he appears to live here, and, and he told us a little bit about what was uh, going on. I want you to listen to this interaction with him. They just search my cars and search me. That's all. Do you know what they're looking for? Just information, I guess. Related to what? Uh, transactions. All they can tell me, really. The man also told us that he runs some sort of auto repair business that he is co-owner of, and that's the transactions that he was uh, alluding to. So we're working to learn a bit more information about that exactly. We're, of course, asking the FBI more questions, and we're going to continue to follow this story throughout the day and keep you updated. Live in Garner, Brett East, WRL News. The top job in Durham is open again after the county manager resigned. Kimberly Sowell went on paid leave back in September. She resigned last night. WRL's Monica Casey has been following this story. Monica, there are a lot of questions surrounding this resignation. That's right. Kimberly Sowell was only here in Durham for a little over two years at this point. She started in March of 2022 at a base salary of $255,000. She was the top paid Durham County employee. The county has not yet disclosed a reason for Sowell's leave and her resignation, but multiple sources tell us that leave started in late September related to allegations of retaliation from from county staff after they raised concerns about a potential conflict of interest related to vendor selection for the county. It was a unanimous decision by the board last night to accept that resignation. The board has met in closed session and I'll now entertain a motion to accept the resignation of county manager Dr. Kimberly Sowell effective immediately. Sowell was given a vehicle allowance of $7,200 a year according to her contract and in an addendum she received a housing allowance of $2,000 per month. That was an increase from her original contract that gave her $1,000 a month for housing for the first six months of her job here. Now at last night's meeting, commissioners appointed the acting county manager Claudia Hager as the interim county manager for now. I've reached out to each county County Commissioner for comment on this resignation. I've heard back from one of them saying this is a personnel matter and she would not be able to talk about it. Live in Durham, Monica Casey, WRL News.
Tonight, you can share your thoughts about how the city of Durham's budget can be used to help kids. The city's budget and management services department is hosting a community conversation about youth related projects tonight. This is happening from six to eight at the Boys and Girls Club on Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. It's one of a series of seven community events on funding priorities for the next fiscal year. A change in our weather pattern brings a big warm up just in time for Halloween. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is on the WRL weather patio with the temperatures for trick or treat time. Nothing spooky here, but your artwork. Right. Now, you know, I, I wish I could claim that I, I drew that because I mean, if I drew that, I'd be pretty impressed with myself. As a matter of fact, I mean, you know, we got the little dance going on and, and everything. All right, no, I'll stop. <laughs> Halloween forecast. Yeah, I mean, so, sort of scary. 80 degrees in Raleigh, 80 in Goldsboro, 82 in Fayetteville, 70s up in Roxboro and South Hill. It's going to be great for costumes that, you know, don't uh, you know, that, you know, maybe are a little bit on the thin side. Uh, it should be able to, uh, you know, the kids will not have to have the jackets on that's going to be great um so but 80 degrees at the end of october so far this year we've seen 10 days at 80 degrees or warmer and the average is six fortunately we don't have too many more days left in october so we won't quite reach that record but we'll probably end up with at least two more days in the 80s nine times we've had 80s or warmer or 80s uh on halloween since 1944 so it doesn't happen terribly often our warmest 85 back in 2019 and the cold 30 degrees back in 1963. So what's it going to feel like for trick or treat time? Should be really nice. We'll see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. So at five o'clock, 76 degrees, and then the sun sets. It's getting dark at seven, 71 degrees, and then around 966. So really is going to be very pleasant for us. Halloween and warm again on Friday, but then a front comes through that'll drop our temperatures for the weekend. A lot of things happening. I'll show you what it will feel like coming up. Elizabeth, thanks. People in the town of Black Mountain will gather for a night of healing. A reflection and remembrance program begins at 6 p.m. to recognize the community's loss because of Helene. The event features speeches from community leaders, live music, and a candlelight vigil. It will be streamed on the town of Black Mountain's Facebook page. A month after Hurricane Helene, recovery efforts are still underway in parts of Georgia. Also, tons of debris are slowly being turned into mulch. A landfill in Augusta is filling up with picked up debris. Richmond County officials say they have 95 trucks on cleanup right now. The trucks have picked up more than 560,000 cubic yards of debris. They are focusing on main roads to ensure they are safe for emergency vehicles, school buses and other cars. Covering Wake County this noon, extra security is at Broughton High School today. The safety precautions are in place after a student was found with a gun nearby campus yesterday. WRO's Nick Perlin reports parents have a lot of questions about what happened there. Parents tell us they're relieved nobody got hurt after a gun was found near campus yesterday, but they're using this as an opportunity to talk to their kids about what can be done to prevent gun violence. Now take a look at this. This is an email Broughton High parents received yesterday telling them a gun was found off campus belonging to a student. Officers confirmed that they found that gun on a student during first lunch period. Now today there will be extra security at Broughton in order to keep students and staff safe. Parents still have questions about what happened yesterday and what can be done to prevent this, but they say conversations about gun violence is a good place to start. You have to have those conversations with your student to say this is how you keep yourself safe and you just have to be aware. The student who was found with the gun is currently facing disciplinary actions. In Raleigh, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Cell phone use in schools is up for review in Wake County. This morning, some school board members said they want a district wide cell phone policy, and that could include restrictions on when phones can be used during the school day. Many schools already have restrictions, but board members say the school's policies are inconsistent and inadequate. Chairman Chris Haggerty says he's worried about distractions and student mental health. The school system has held parent and student focus groups on what changes they should make and they'll do a survey next month. JP Morgan is suing customers for check fraud. The bank claims some customers withdrew cash by taking advantage of a temporary glitch that went viral on TikTok. The glitch in August let customers deposit big checks into ATMs and then withdraw the money immediately before the checks could clear, even if they later bounced. 
The bank says one customer owes $291,000. So far, no one has paid back any of the money. And happening right now in the WRL Live Center, NC State quarterback Grayson McCall is talking about his future after he announced his retirement last week. This is actually a live look at a press conference that he is holding right now. McCall was diagnosed with several concussions before he decided it was time to hang up the helmet. He says he consulted with brain specialists and his family before coming to that very difficult decision. He says although he is very upset that he has to end his football career, He's excited for what the future holds. Take a listen. You know, at the end of the day, I want to I want to have a, a full life. I want to get married and have kids one day, and uh, I want to be a football coach, and I want to be a great dad one day. So, um, without a healthy brain, none of those things are possible. So, at um, you know, I love the game so much, but it, it's come down to, to things bigger than that. So he is looking on the bright side of all of this. And as you heard him say, he wants to pursue a, uh, a job in coaching, something that head coach Dave Doran endorsed. He says he thinks that he would be a perfect fit for that. The Los Angeles Dodgers are one win away from clinching the World Series. There hasn't been a fall classic sweep since the Giants swept away the Tigers in 2012. Tonight could be the night. The Dodgers have not trailed since game one. Freddie Freeman homered for the third game in a row, this time in the first inning of game three. Final four to two. New York has one last chance to keep the series alive. Tonight's coverage of game four begins at seven on Fox 50 and WRL News on Fox 50 will air after the game. Next at noon, a key Donald Trump ally was released from prison this morning. What Steve Bannon plans to do now with one week left before Election Day. Also getting your money back quicker for canceled flights. The new rules for getting your refund. Us breaking down the numbers of a new WREL election poll. At 12.30, we go live to an early voting site to see how the numbers stack up with one week to go. Keep watching WREL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. We'll give you this live look in North Hills right now. Blue skies, just beautiful sunshine out there. Mid 60s, the temperature and on the rise for the rest of the week. As you watch WRL News available on YouTube TV and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. Longtime Trump ally Steve Bannon is out of prison. He was released from the Federal Correctional Facility in Connecticut this morning after spending four months for contempt of Congress. Bannon was convicted in 2022 for defying a subpoena in the congressional investigation into the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. He is expected to stand trial in New York in December for allegedly defrauding donors to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Newly released video shows the final moments before the death of a Missouri inmate. Lawyers for the family of Athel Moore says he was excessively pepper sprayed by the emergency response team. The video shows Moore strapped to a restraint cart with his head covered with a hood and his body wrapped. Moore died last December after he was not given emergency care. Four former corrections officers were indicted by a grand jury in September. The warden has been replaced. Just in time for holiday air travel, new automatic refund rules are now in effect for canceled or significantly delayed flights. Amy Kiley details the rules and other regulations that cover refunds for fees. Before your next takeoff, take a look at your new passenger rights. The Transportation Secretary says automatic airfare refund rules took effect yesterday. You get your money back and you get your money back without having to ask. Here he is discussing them back in April before Congress enshrined them in the FAA Reauthorization Act. When an airline knows that uh, anybody on a flight that's going to get canceled is going to get their money back, it gives them more of a reason to make the investments and the realistic schedules that prevent that from happening to you in the first place. If your flight is disrupted and you don't rebook, you get an automatic cash refund within 20 days. That applies to cancellations, domestic delays of three or more hours, and international delays of at least six hours. Separate rules mandate a luggage fee refund if you don't get your bag by a certain time, and refunds for prepaid services like seat selection and Wi-Fi if you don't receive them. I think uh, airlines are just going to have to realize that consumers, you can't just capture them forever with bad policy. 
A group representing major airlines says it's on board with automatic refunds, though the rules have faced pushback from the industry. The market got distorted with some of these tactics in which airlines basically had too much power over the consumers. I was Amy Kiley reporting, and passengers who use credit cards to pay for fares can get their refunds within a week. A little quicker putting that money back in the account. Yeah, and that's what people want, cash back. They don't want the travel vouchers, right. just give me my money back. Right. right. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is out there enjoying the beautiful weather on the WRO weather patio and love the fall colors of the mums in front, but also in the gardens with the trees turning color. Oh, yes, yeah, so pretty. I mean, no need to go anywhere, right? I mean, uh, this is the perfect weather that, you know, all of us really are a lot of sitting. Anyway, dream of around here, and it is here for sure. This is a live look, of course, the gardens behind, and we're definitely seeing the trees starting to change. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the map of our color change for our area coming up in just a couple minutes. 66 is our current temperature. It's super comfortable out here right now. Our dew point is 48. That just means it's very dry. We'll climb up to around 71 this afternoon. And 69 is actually our normal high. So we'll be close to that today. Here's what's changing for us. We're going to see today more of a southeasterly flow and a southerly flow. That's picking up some of the moisture off the Atlantic and pushing it into our area. Now, right here, we are clear almost as a bell. There are just a few high, thin clouds. But there have been some clouds this morning to our south. That's because of this push of moisture that's coming off of the Atlantic. So let's take a look. This is uh, the high resolution satellite and you can see from Raleigh southward. There's some cloud cover Fayetteville Sanford um, over towards uh, Moore County, Sampson County and even Wayne County seeing some cloud cover right now and that will continue for the rest of the day. We take a look at our voting uh, forecast. If you're headed out to vote early today again, this afternoon's high will be in the low 70s. If you're going to be out uh, around six or seven temperatures will drop into the mid 60s. If you're in the south, of course, there may be some cloud cover, but nobody's likely to see rain really anywhere in the viewing area. We continue to have some beautiful color and we will for another couple of weeks. I love this picture from Michelle Kranz. Uh, one of the cedar trees there in Falls Lake just kind of looks like it's floating on the water, doesn't it? Those beautiful orange colors. We love your weather watcher photos. Go to WRL.com, search weather watchers and uh, send us all the exciting things that you've been seeing in your backyard. This is a look at our current foliage map. And we'll talk about our area because now we're getting into the time when we start to see the color popping. I noticed it this weekend, really pretty in my neighborhood. The orange just north of Raleigh is moderate color and the yellow is low color. Notice it's really, you know, black and red back into the mountains. The highest elevation is really above 4,000 feet. All the leaves are gone. But a lot of the communities there in the mountains are wishing for uh, some people to come and visit because their economies count on it. If you're planning to go in the next weekend or so, just make sure you check the town's website before you make plans to go there. So you'll know if they want you there or not. High pressure builds in and that helps to bring us plenty of sunshine, warm temperatures. That southwesterly wind's going to warm us on up to 80. We talked about that at the beginning of the newscast. So really warm temperatures on our way, but 69 is normal. We're at 79 for tomorrow, 80 Thursday and 81 on Friday. So uh, how close to records? Not far. The record high for Raleigh on uh, Halloween is 85 and the record in Fayetteville 86. So we will be close to it. And that Halloween planner looking good. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 70s for trick or treat time. Don't forget about the time change this weekend. Of course, uh, that's something that uh, we'll get an extra hour back, but we have to make that shift. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk more about the tropics where there's still small potential for development. Elizabeth, thanks. We've already seen election workers across our state and country face threats this season. Coming up at Coming up at five, what tools and training local elections officials are using to protect poll workers? Coming up at four. Plus, it's now more expensive to live in Raleigh than Charlotte. The reasons driving the rise at 530. And still ahead, this new new scrutiny for Subway. The new allegations at the center of a lawsuit against the sandwich chain. Also, to share or not to share, Netflix cracks down on password sharing. Now it's encouraging people to share content. We'll explain after the break. The sandwich chain Subway faces accusations of misleading customers. They're laid out in a new federal class action lawsuit. NBC's Christine Romans shares the premise for the legal action. You wanted a spicy deal? Subway delivered. This morning, Subway facing scrutiny in a new proposed class action lawsuit. 
the plaintiff, Anna Tollison, accusing the restaurant chain of grossly misleading customers after she bought a steak and cheese sandwich that the suit says contained 200 percent less meat than the heroes depicted in Subway ads. Tollison's suit arguing that Subway's actions are especially concerning now that inflation, food and meat prices are very high, adding many consumers are struggling financially. Wait, Subway did what? And the suit says other Subway customers have noticed shrinkage in its sandwiches, too. This one looks really, really skimpy compared to the picture. Similar lawsuits filed in the same court against McDonald's, Wendy's and Taco Bell were dismissed last year. NBC News has reached out to Subway for comment. With more than 20,000 U.S. locations, this isn't the first time Subway has come under fire for not meeting customers' expectations, like this mystery meat lawsuit filed in 2021. Two California residents sued the restaurant chain, claiming that an independent test of the ingredients revealed that the sandwiches are made from, quote, anything but tuna. Always a bad day when you have to launch an independent test to prove that your tuna is in fact tuna. Yeah. A separate lawsuit argued Subway's famous footlong sandwiches were not actually a foot long. Both of those cases were eventually dismissed. Where did chicken at? Over the summer, another popular food chain, Chipotle, receiving customer criticism for smaller portion sizes. When I get a bowl and they give me two pieces of chicken, I'm like, can you just add one more scoop? And they're like, do you want double me? I'm like, no, I just want the chicken I asked for. At the time, Chipotle CEO admitting the social media criticism was fair, and as a result, the company planned to reevaluate its portion sizes. Complaints piling up as a difficult economy has consumers asking to get what they paid for. Christine Romans reporting the general election is exactly one week away and the presidential race is down to the wire here in North Carolina. How close it is in this swing state of ours and the tiny sliver separating them. Plus, the election is about more than just politics. For many Americans, it's about their spending and emergency savings, how some voters believe the results will affect their nest eggs. And here's a look at your winning NC Education lottery numbers. We'll be back in a minute. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We are in the home stretch. The general election is exactly one week from today, and we have a new WRAL News poll out that shows the presidential race is a dead heat in North Carolina. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are tied at 47%. WRL Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie is live at the early voting site over at Chavis Park with how those numbers break down. Hi, Laura. Hey, Renee. You know, overall, of course, the tie is, is overall. But when you drill down into the data, what you see is a deeply divided electorate. Uh, just about every demographic group has a clear preference for either one candidate or the other. Uh, gender is a big divide in this race. Men prefer Trump over Harris by six points, 50 to 44. Women prefer Harris by seven, 50 for Harris, 43 for Trump. That adds up to a 13-point gender gap, which is pretty significant. The racial groups are even more polarized. Trump leads among white voters by nearly two to one, 62 to 33 percent for Harris, while black voters prefer Harris by four to one, with 82 percent for Harris and 13 percent for Trump. Harris's support among black women is stronger than her support among black men. A Western Carolina political scientist Chris Cooper says at this point, candidates really have to focus on turning out their voters. To me, what this poll says is the persuasion game is over. Everybody's made up their mind. It is about mobilization 100% at this point. It's about getting your voters out, off the couch, and to the ballot box. We can also see deep divisions by geography, with Harris leading by two to one among urban voters and Trump leading by a similar margin among rural voters. Harris does have a statistically significant advantage in our poll among suburban voters, which is mostly driven by women. Uh, both Trump and Harris are planning events tomorrow in the area, aiming to motivate their voters to get out and bank their votes early. Uh, the state has already set early voting turnout records so far, and it's only expected to get busier as the week goes on. Laura Leslie, WRL News. News live in Raleigh. 
And you can go to WRL.com right now to see our complete article on the poll results and the race to win North Carolina. Plus tonight at 6, Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Lessig will dig deeper into those numbers. She'll also report which block of voters could ultimately decide whether Trump or Harris wins North Carolina. Today's the last day you can request an absentee ballot as well. If you're voting by mail, they say experts say you should get that ballot sent out today. The Postal Service says you should allow for a week for your ballot to make it through the mail. If you're worried your ballot won't make it on time, you can hand deliver it to an early voting site in your county. State election officials in North Carolina are working closely with local and state law enforcement to ensure poll workers and voters are not harassed while they're voting. Some states are putting the power right in the hands of voters. The Oklahoma Department of Public Safety says one way voters can protect themselves is through an app called Protect OK. People can use the app to report any threat. They can even upload pictures and decide if they want to be anonymous or not. Administrators say they've had about 60 reports in the last month. We know nobody plans these things in a vacuum. There's people that see things, there's people that hear things, and, and we want them to report those to us so we can investigate those in a timely manner. When voters send a tip, the Oklahoma Counterterrorism Intelligence Center vets them and sends resources to respond if needed. And happening right now in the WRA Live Center, some new information to the newsroom. We are learning that job openings fell to pre-pandemic levels last month. The Bureau of Labor Statistics released the new data. Uh, they said that there were 7.4 million unfilled jobs on the last day of September. That's below economists' expectations. The decline in job openings reflects a labor market that has slowed back to a pre-pandemic pace. But they say despite, despite that slowed hiring, uh, data shows that workers still remain in demand. We're in the final days before the November election, and while Americans consider how to fill out their ballot, researchers say how consumers are feeling about the economy is directly tied to the tight presidential race. Emily Schmidt breaks down the numbers and what that might mean for spending. Though polls show voters sharply divided about their presidential choice, one thing unites them. The election is top of mind for many, many consumers. Are you better off? than you were four years ago. This question is rolled around every election since Ronald Reagan asked it of Jimmy Carter. Gallup asked it last month. 39% said they are better off. 52% said they're worse. The positive view most likely to come from Democrats, yet both parties see opportunities to win over voters. My vision of an opportunity economy is one where everyone can compete and have a real chance to succeed. If Kamala Harris gets four more years, our economy can never recover. The University of Michigan surveys consumers each month, and this month found their expectations of the economy hinge on who they believe will win the election. A lot of consumers believe that the economy will look very, very different under the two candidates. So there probably isn't that much confidence for big ticket purchases right now. Big ticket purchases like appliances, autos, homes. An October Ipsos poll of consumers found 47% saying they're spending less because of election uncertainty. The same amount say they're saving more. I think collectively consumers are looking for some relief in the next couple of weeks and some resolution to the uncertainty they've been facing all year. That was Emily Schmidt reporting, and in a recent poll, more than two-thirds of adults say they are likely to change their spending, investing, or travel plans if the candidate they support loses the election. And back here in the WREL Live Center, the family of Charlotte woman Shanquilla Robinson has filed a lawsuit over her death. She died two years ago today while vacationing in Mexico. Her family spoke today. Uh, they say they are suing the six people who were with her, as well as the FBI and the State Department. Her mother was emotional. She said she was a kind-hearted person who loved everyone. You're going to take her away from her family, away from um, out, out the country to do her harm like that. And all of you sit back now, one of them didn't have no sense to stop it or try to help her. They're going to sit there and video it and look at it because they all had a part to do with it. They all played a part in her murder. And each and every one of them should be arrested because she was a good person. That's right. She was, never did nothing to hurt nobody. 
An autopsy revealed that she died from a severe spinal cord injury and a broken neck. The lawsuit is also calling for the extradition of one of the people who she was vacationing with. That person remains in Mexico. We all have that one scene in a show that we want to watch over and over. The new feature from Netflix that makes that possible and how you can share that experience with others. Right now, there's no snow on Mount Fuji. Why that is very unusual and very concerning. Keep up with WRL News wherever you are. Download the WRL News app to get breaking news alerts and watch our newscast anytime. You have an opportunity to ask about ways to apply for health care coverage, including NC Medicaid during open enrollment tonight. From 6 to 7 p.m., the Department of Health and Human Services is hosting a fireside chat. It's for anyone who wants to talk about who is newly eligible for Medicaid under the expansion. It will also explain how to apply for Medicaid or other health care coverage options. You can tune in virtually on the department's Facebook, Twitter or YouTube channels. According to the CDC, more than 600,000 people in the U.S. will have a stroke for the first time this year. There are now new guidelines to help lower a person's risk for the first time in a decade. The guidelines say that popular weight loss and diabetes drugs can decrease the risk of stroke in people with diabetes and a high risk of heart disease. Women are also being urged to monitor their blood pressure if they are pregnant or taking birth control. Netflix is letting you savor the moment from your favorite shows and movies. The streaming service is launching Moments, a new feature available on its iOS app that allows users to rewatch and share their favorite scenes. Moments allows subscribers to bookmark a scene on their phone, which is saved in their My Netflix tab to be watched again or shared on social media. The service will be available for Android in the next few weeks. Mount Fuji breaks a record, but it's not one scientists want to claim. What experts say is delaying snow on this celebrated mountain. The candy, the costumes, the spooky decor, all signs that Halloween is right around the corner. Not everyone, though, welcomes the howling and loud music. How you can have a spooky spectacular that is sensory friendly. Carbon dioxide concentrations have risen by 11% in just 20 years. That's a new high. Climate scientists warn that the burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas is a main factor in climate change. They say the expansion of fossil fuels must end if the world hopes to meet the target set in the Paris Agreement. Scientists in Japan are sounding the alarm about the impact of the climate crisis on one of the country's most beloved landmarks. So November is just a few days away, but Mount Fuji remains snowless. This marks the latest date without a snow cap there since records began 130 years ago. Snow caps usually begin to form on Mount Fuji around October 2nd. Last year, it was recorded on October 5th. The lack of snow as of October 29th beats the previous record of October 26 that was set in 1955 and in 2016. 65 percent of voters in North Carolina voted early in the 2020 election. A study before that tried to see if weather had any impact on voter participation. Meteorologist Chris Michaels examines the data to see if weather plays a significant role. So there was a study done that does show that the weather plays a significant role on voter participation. It shows that rain reduces that by 1% per inch. That may not sound like much, but 1% in a tight race could make a big difference. I was surprised to see that snow reduces that by only half a percentage point, but you got to keep in mind that voters are going to be more acclimated to the weather that's typical for their region. So snow would affect us heavily, whereas a place like Missoula, Montana, it wouldn't. It also showed that this affects party lines that for every one inch of rain above normal that favors the Republicans by two and a half percent. And in the simulation they did in this study, it showed that a dry election could have led to Clinton winning North Carolina in 92 and Gore winning Florida in 2000. Now bringing things back home, Raleigh ever since 1944, the average on election day has been 64 for a high, 41 for a low. And out of those 20 elections, seven of them had rain. This election day, here's a look at the pattern. High pressure pressure over the eastern U.S. Stormier in the plains right now looks like we'll be in the mid to upper 70s with a mainly dry election day here in North Carolina.
the facts behind the weather <laughs> and the impact. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned snow. We can assure you, no snow on this election day for us. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had it in, uh, we're coming up on like a yeah, thousand days. We're in that big now. snow I mean, drought. Exactly. Mm. Elizabeth Gardner <laughs> out on the WRL severe weather pattern. Uh, weather patio, and uh, that pattern's not coming around this way very, very it's soon. It's not, and, and Jeff wasn't kidding. It's actually 900 and something days since we've had any snow officially at RDU. And of course, you know, this time of year, we're just happy to enjoy the beautiful weather. We take a look at the gardens here. Um, there are people out actually enjoying our gardens uh, this afternoon. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, and the gardeners just came out and uh, over the last week or so put out all the winter plants. We still have lots of things that are blooming and all those things are going to be blooming for uh, the entire winter. So uh, just a reminder, you know, we call it the Azalea Gardens and it's so beautiful when they're blooming in April, but it's pretty all year round. Take a look at satellite and radar. Here's the big picture. Notice that rain that's sitting offshore. That is pushing inland. We talked about that a little while ago. We're going to see that uh, precipitation pushing toward us. It's not going to rain this far inland, but we are seeing a flow coming off the Atlantic and that's bringing us enough moisture for some cloud cover. We'll roll through the afternoon and you can just see some waves of clouds rolling through right now. But we started the newscast um, and all the way even up until 1215. We were really sunny and all of a sudden we're starting to cloud over just a little bit here out on the patio, but you can see that's going to come and go. We're not likely to see cloud cover all day long. Just uh, really pleasant conditions as we get through the afternoon. That Halloween forecast. We're going to start to see the warm up tomorrow and then 80 degrees for Halloween and uh, in Raleigh, 82 in Fayetteville, 77 in Roxborough and in South Hills. It's going to be warm everywhere. What you do and don't need, you're not going to need a jacket or a coat for Halloween and you're not going to need an umbrella flashlight. Yes, actually, because we're not going to see it much of a moon. The moon will be new, which means that it'll be fairly dark. So you may need that flashlight Again, the Halloween planner just continues to look fantastic. We'll see partly cloudy skies for Halloween. And by the time we get to five or six o'clock, temperatures will be back down into the mid seventies at seven o'clock around 71 and then 66 at nine o'clock when it's mostly over. One thing to remember over the weekend, we've got the City of Oaks Marathon. We're a proud partner of that race. Temperatures will cool back down on Saturday and Sunday. That's going to make it really nice for race temperatures at 6 a.m. 47 at 10 a.m. 58. We may see just a little bit of cloud cover on and off, but it doesn't look like it will be wet. Uh, great. Uh, running conditions for us on Sunday. And of course, that's a, a pretty popular race there. I'll take a quick look at the tropics. Still just a 40% chance that we could see some development down in the Caribbean. It looks like there's not much chance that this is going to develop. The models continually, continually uh, show a lesser and lesser chance. And so we're not likely to see that develop. But at one point, it looked like it might develop off the coast. And we'll send it back to you. Thanks for that, Elizabeth. Costumes and candy and Halloween staples. What if your little ghoul doesn't like the noise that comes with the holiday? How one organization is making sure that everyone can take part in the fun festivities. We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we're following for you today. FBI agents spent several hours at a home in Garner this morning in the Hunter's Mark subdivision. This was on Hay River Street. Agents were seen going in and out of the home. They were also searching a car in the driveway and even towed away a pickup truck. We asked a man who came out of the home what the FBI was there for. He said searching for transactions related to an auto repair shop that he co-owns. A mother of a Charlotte woman who died while vacationing with friends in Mexico has filed a wrongful death lawsuit. Chanquilla Robinson died in 2022, a day after arriving in Cabo. The lawsuit accuses the six people she was with with her death. A video posted to social media showed Robinson being attacked by one of them. The FBI said it did not have enough evidence to support federal prosecution. Robinson's death certificate says she died after suffering a spinal cord injury and broken neck. The Durham County manager has resigned. The Board of Commissioners accepted Kimberly Soule's resignation last night. Sowell has been on leave since September 9th. And sources tell WRL county staff accused Sowell of retaliation after they raised concerns about a possible conflict of interest over vendor selection. A spooky but sensory sensitive haunted house on Long Island is allowing everyone, including people with special needs, to get in on the holiday spirit. Jody Goldberg walks us through the attraction. Okay, what is this here? Anthony
Jenny Rossi loves all things Halloween, and this Halloween house has just the right amount of spooky. I love the whole setup. The new sensory sensitive walkthrough in Garden City is the brainchild of Lonnie Harrington. The director of the Family Center for Achievement came up with the idea to give those with autism and intellectual disabilities the ability to take part in Halloween fun. A traditional haunted house has people jumping out at you, scaring you as you walk through. You don't have that, you don't have the strobe lights, you don't have the fog machines. For $20 a person, visitors can walk through the non-triggering experience. The cows, the clown, everything in it. They could touch the backdrops and bats and the lights and cobwebs. There's also an area to trick or treat. They come in, they have fun, they come dancing through, they come touching, they look, they walk through. Some two, through two or three times, they love it. When we see the guys smiling and the families um, are able to let us know that they never saw something like this before, it just brings a joy to all of us. You deal with children and adults that have special needs, so you want them to be able to go through and experience other things that everybody else experiences. Safe and welcoming places to keep everyone in the Halloween spirit. What an idea there. That was Jody Goldberg reporting. Parents and caregivers of autistic children or children with sensory processing disorder are also adopting the dark blue pumpkin while trick-or-treating. The growing movement is a signal to neighbors to tone it down when possible. It doesn't have to be scary to be mm -hmm. fun. Our pet of the day is a confident boy who is as smart as a whip. Meet the marvelous Murphy. He is a tall fella who likes to give hugs. Volunteers at the Wake County Animal Center say he walks well on a leash and is perfect on car rides. Murphy is ready for adventure and would be the ideal hiking buddy. If you have a dog at home who's looking for a playmate, Murphy is the dog for you. Contact the Wake County Animal Center for more information about the marvelous Murphy. A WRAL News poll is revealing just how tight the presidential race is in North Carolina. And coming up on WRAL News at 4, the number of voters Trump and Harris campaigns need to close the gap. Thanks for spending your lunch hour with us. NBC News Daily is next on WRAL, your next local news update in 30 minutes. You can also get breaking news updates anytime with our WRAL News app. Good sunshine out there. Enjoy the day. watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.